In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if we were in church, I'd be saying to you, would you mind sitting down for just a moment? Um, I'm very privileged to be able to, to say, which I suspect most of you know by now, that for some unknown reason, the Bishop of Edinburgh has appointed me as a canon of St Mary's Cathedral in Edinburgh, uh, as part of the chapter. And I'm very humbled and proud to have been asked to do that, and I'm delighted to have accepted. Uh, just to clear up something, the sad news for everybody is it means I stay in Kelso, I'm afraid. You don't get rid of me that easily. And so nothing changes in my role as rector of Kelso, which is deeply important to me. So, uh, so thank you for all your support and prayers and cards and emails and Facebook messages and things like that this week. A good way to start Lent, in a way, for me to just dwell on uh, the privilege of priesthood and the privilege of being called to serve not only a Kelso congregation, but the wider church as well. Today is the beginning of Lent, 40 days of preparation, and I hope that you've all received a Lent diary from us um, or downloaded it. If you haven't, I mean, it's not too late just to send either Grace or me a message and we'll send one to you. Um, and of course, because of Lent, when it's this time of reflection, we change into purple. We have no flowers or any other form of decoration as we prepare for Easter Day. So a few moments of quiet. We say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so at this time of Lent and reflection, we bring before God the things that trouble us, the things we wish we hadn't done. We bring before God all our thoughts, because we remember that God is love, and we are each a deeply loved child of God. There's no room for fear in that love. We love because God loved us first. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry, forgive us our sins, and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this first Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weaknesses, we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. So let us pray. And so as we come to this season of Lent, loving God, we pray for all those who feel that they are in a wilderness. All those who are searching, crying out. Those who feel lost, lonely and abandoned. We've seen in the news this week a picture of a young child in Yemen shot and rescued by their brother. Behold the image of that and of another child playing dead on the street. And so we hold those two images in our hearts and in our minds as we pray for peace in the world. We pray that lives are not to be played with, but lives are the image of God, created in God's image here on earth, to be loved, cherished, and valued. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of pandemic, when we struggle with COVID, we pray for all those who are ill at this time, in mind and body or estate, for those who are awaiting operations, those who've been told this week that their operation may be a year or even two years away. We pray for those people who have to make decisions, how hard it is for them, with six names in front of them, to make the decision who goes forward today and who waits. And so we pray for doctors and nurses, for administration staff, and for all those who make our National Health Service run giving thanks for their dedication. Lord, we know we could always do it better, but each one of us could do better. And so let us look at the positive and not always the negative. Let us thank God for what we have, as opposed to shouts about what went wrong. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world at this time of Lent, and we pray for people of all faiths, that all may honour one another and seek the common good. As we pray for the church, we pray for our small part of it, the Scottish Episcopal Church for our bishops, our people, and our clergy. And we pray for those of the other denominations with whom we work so closely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember our friends and our families, those who care for us and have cared for us. Those who are there, those who phone us, those who send us a text or an email. We also give thanks to those who we see no more. We remember particularly those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Giving thanks for their lives and praying for all who mourn them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Forty days and forty nights thou hast fasted in the wilderness. 
And we pray that during this Lent, you will be with us to guide us and inspire us, to help us be the people you want us to be. And as we feel and fall in that wilderness, you won't just tempt us, but you will lead us and guide us to the oasis that is life. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I should have said at the beginning that uh, you get a trinity of us today. And so I'm doing the ministry of the word. And then Moira Edwardson, our lay reader, is going to have the gospel and preach. And then Grace is going to celebrate. And so we celebrate this beginning of Lent all together and sharing our unique gifts and our individual gifts with all of you. We thank you for sharing your gifts with us. Let's get back to the beginning, shall we? To the book of Genesis, to Noah. I don't want to arc on about it. Chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, and as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I've set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters will never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And so as we live often with floods, we remember that through the rainbow, God is with us in all we do and every struggle that we may have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Moira is going to come read our gospel and preach. <laughs> 